Good evening and welcome to the May 17th, 2021 meeting of the Borough of Belmar Planning Board. Please join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, April, for that fine flag. <laughs> all right. Uh, I believe Doug is with us, and we do not have a workshop discussion topic today. Correct, Doug? Uh, no topic. If you'd like me to go through the application, we can do that. I would love for you to go through the application for all the uh, all the board members, please. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a straightforward site plan for the development on the rooftop of the facility you know as the Beach House Brewery. Uh, the applicant is technically MB1 LLC. Um, there are no, there's no variants requested. There are no waivers requested. There were in your packet, you may have seen some initial waivers requested by way of certain items prefatory to filing a complete application. I believe now all those waiver items have been withdrawn or removed. We want to make sure that the applicant advises us that, that they're not seeking any waivers. Uh, ultimately, what happens is this is going to be a facility that's going to contain a restaurant, a retail facility, and a brewery. Um, what I think becomes important for the board to pay attention to, and I hope the applicant will spend some time with, is the separate entities, those of which are before the board this evening for the amended site plan, and those which will be part of the operation may not technically before the board this evening by way of approvals. And I say that because always it's the applicant which is before you, unless they have permission from the property owner. In this instance, it is the property owner which is coming before you. But there are going to be sort of an integration of uses at the site, perfectly permissible, no problem in doing that. But it will speak to the reason as to why they are here for an amended site plan as to simply, not simply an outdoor dining use. Uh, the applicant in this instance, as has been identified in our engineering report, basically they're going to, uh, this is in the seaport redevelopment zone. The standards that they apply are the CBD-1 standards. You may recall that in certain instances, uh, there's sometimes a question as to what standards apply. It is the seaport redevelopment zone, but in terms of the intellectual exercise, if you will, the standards are the CBD-1 zone. But there's no longer a CDB-1 zone applicable, it's just those same standards. What the applicant is proposing to do in this instance is to develop the site on the deck area. Uh, the site, I think, ultimately is going to contain approximately 152 seats. Um, broken out through different table settings in terms of what's happening on the first floor. I think now where there may have been some retail uses, that's going to be a first floor bar area. The second floor area is going to be a portion of a restaurant, restaurant and a second floor tap room. Um, I think the seating there, we want to make sure we have a handle on it right now. Um, I think there's, well, I'll let the applicant speak to those things. No, uh, just, just to be clear, the beach house is there. The, yes. the bar at the ground floor is there with some retail component for the beach house. And the, um, the brewery with uh, the tables, chairs, and the restaurant at the second floor are existing. Yes. And, and the applicant, it's my understanding, you may recall when we first reviewed this application, this was pre the site being in the redevelopment area. Um, they had a brewery license. They have now through different licensure, and I hope the applicant will discuss the different types of licensure, which now allows it to serve food in this area, treated much the same as a restaurant. So that what's going to happen is 
we're going to take a look at this as a, as a site anew, if you will. Services happening, specifically what will be located within the facility, hours of operation, employees, will there be entertainment? Uh, if there is, what are the proposed hours? Um, what type of trash removal or facilities are going to be located within the area? What is the seating? What is the total breakout of the seating in the area? What is the increase in the seating over what had been approved in the past? How are they going to be uh, addressing parking? You may recall that this is a, a parking area that goes at least on the backside to the plaza. In many instances, uh, an applicant is allowed to utilize uh, close parking in reasonable proximity to its facility. I know that over the past, we have uh, in a sense used that facility, maybe not for tonight's exercise and certainly not the applicant's fault, but at some point in time, we may want to have some type of assessment as to how many retail uses are using that parking area. Um, what are we going to have for peak usage of this facility? When will it be in operation? Um, is there going to be any additional lighting in the area? Is there going to be a sound system if there is entertainment? If there appears to be some type of a facility that's going to have, uh, for lack of a better way to, to explain it, an awning. What's that awning going to look like? You know, we do have certain limitations as to whether or not advertising go on an awning, et cetera, et cetera. Here is a depiction for seating. What will the tables look like? How many chairs? Um, as to the exterior, I believe that there's a railing proposed. What will the ra railing consist of? Um, this is just simply going to be used in season, if you will. Find out what the season will be. Um, and as I say, most of this sounds similar to what you would do for outdoor dining, but to the extent that there's been a determination that amended site plan is required, and it's sort of one in the same application, I believe you should be going through all of those types of things and have the applicant address that. Um, as I say, there's no variance relief. What you're really doing is saying, is this additional use going to be able to fit in this facility once it's fully developed? Um, as I said, the waivers before, there had been a temporary waiver for escrow fees. I don't believe that's a waiver any longer. There's been a temporary waiver for the application fees. I don't believe that's a that's an issue anymore. Um, I think that covers your application seating. Straightforward, if you find that it meets the site plan, that it can accommodate the uses in this instance, there's no variance to relief. It's a permitted use in seaport area redevelopment zone. Then you go forward and hear the applicant out, weigh in as to your planning expertise, provide them direction. I think that's the only application to see Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kovitz. Uh, moving on the agenda, uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes and waive the reading of the April 19th, 2001 planning board meeting? Motion. I'll offer it. Mr. Lindsay, I'll take your first, and Mr. Myers, I'll take your second, if you don't mind. Yeah. All right. So we got Mr. Meyer. Yes. Mr. Prontinentis. Yes. Mr. Carvelli. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Valente. Yes. And Mr. McDermott. Yes. Thank you, April. And just so for the record, too, we have Christine Bell, our planner and Sam Avaki and our engineer here. Thank you very much and welcome Christine and Sam. I'm glad you're here. All right, the first and only application tonight is that as summarized by Mr. Kovats, uh, MB1 Belmar LLC, also known as Beach House Brewery uh, at 801 Main Street. It's a minor site plan uh, proposed roof deck for the brewery seating. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Jennifer Krimko on behalf of MB1, uh, the applicant and the owner. How are you? Good. 
Good to see you. Do you Ms. have Ms. any Ms. other professionals that need to be on uh, as a I, Yes, my architect, Dan uh, Governale. Okay, that's good. Right. And I believe that's it. So by way of very brief. Excuse just but just before you make comment, can we at least swear the witnesses in? Yes, please. Open yep. the presentation. Sure. All right. Are all your witnesses here? They are. I ask that they raise their right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give before the planning board to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I didn't hear a final I do. If somebody's on mute. I do. Okay. There we go. Now I ask that before you start testimony, you state your name, spelling your last name for purposes of the record, <clears throat> and follow the direction of your counsel. And counsel, if I can just briefly mark exhibits, if I don't have all of them, please correct me. Okay. I, I will. And, and again, I just so you know, I was just going to give a preliminary statement like you did, Mr. Kovetz, I was not going to introduce anybody or any exhibits yet, but That's certainly I'll right. let you. If, if you let me do it this way, I'll be out of your way and you'll have the entire floor and I can sit back. Great. Okay. Um, I have the application dated April 5th, 2021, marked A1. I have a checklist marked uh, April 7th, 2021 as A2. A photograph, uh, also with parking assessment marked as A3 as one exhibit. I have a survey dated 625.13 marked A4. I have a March 29th uh, roof site plan marked A5. I have an A6 packet which I have combined. It contains a temporary authorization to operate permit, some associated writings from uh, council, the original resolution of 2021-145. And I think there may be one more. There was a technical and design review report that was sent I, out. I've still got several more to go. I'm just okay. at A6. Um, that packet, there is a engineering report. April 27, 2021, marked PB1, that's the planning board one, and the TDRC report marked PB2. Uh, Ms. Krimko, those are all of the exhibits we have at this point in time. Are there any additional exhibits that you'll be referring to? There is one, and I'm going to put it up on the screen once I introduce my witnesses, and those are color rendered photographs of the site plan superimposed with actual aerials and photos taken by drone. Okay. Can we agree to mark that as A7? We can. Wonderful. Is that dated? It is not dated. Okay. I'm going to get out of the way. Oh, great. Uh, and, and certainly, having known Doug as long as I'm practicing law and how helpful he has been uh, with getting this ready for the presentation tonight, I certainly don't want to um, contradict anything he said but I will just make by way of quick clarification. Uh, we are seeking site plan approval. It is under the uh, Seaport redevelopment. However, we're not changing any of the uses as were previously approved. Uh, currently there's the retail and the bar on the first, tasting room on the first floor. There is an existing and there was an approved restaurant on the second floor. The distinction being that restaurant was, dis was separate from the brewery use, and it was by a different operator, as you're going to hear through testimony of Joe Brudner, a partner in MB1, and the related entities that uh, operate the Beach House Brewery. We got in a, we, we purchased a um, license from another establishment in town. We transferred it to this location as approved by your mayor and council. Uh, and that enables us to now operate the brewery and the restaurant together. So we're not changing the uses, we're really just uh, moving the liquor license around a little bit. Uh, in addition, as you're going to hear, uh, all we're seeking to do through this application, the only change in, in the operation is to allow for the seasonal use of an existing roof as a rooftop patio for tables, chairs, and a bar in conjunction with the restaurant and the brewery, which are already existing uses. 
Um, as you're going to hear, I, I, I think it does, you'll hear it accommodate it, will address all of the issues that your, um, that your attorney raised, particularly since he was kind enough to share some of the issues with me in advance and with the opportunity to meet with your TDRC to hear some uh, additional issues and comments. And, and again, I think the test here tonight is do we meet your site plan requirements and do we meet the redevelopment plan requirements and the underlying zoning? And I think uh, you're going to find that in fact we do. So I wanna just let you know <clears throat> by way of reference who I have here tonight, because I think that will help guide your questions and who to direct them to. As I indicated, I have Joe Brudner. I'm going to have him go first because I think it's important that he provide you the context of the existing use and the proposed use. Uh, proposed use, excuse me. I have Dan Governale. He is the uh, project architect. He prepared the roof site plan that we moved in as A5, as well as the color rendered photos, which we moved in as A7. And then lastly, I have Maurice Rashed. He's a uh, senior traffic engineer with uh, what was Mazer Consulting is now Collier's Engineering. And he submitted a traffic uh, engineering and parking analysis and will offer testimony with regard to the parking and the availability. So with all of that, Mr. Chair, I- um, The only thing I'd like to do, Ms. Krimko, if we can, uh, for both Maurice and Dan, uh, if we could get the benefit of uh, their expertise. So this way we can, uh, we can validate we, their expertise as, as will, experts. I, I'd be glad to. And what I typically do is do that when I introduce them and have them enter that in the record. And if that that's okay with you. Yeah, that would be terrific. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, thank you. So while Joe Brudner has a lot of expertise, I am not submitting him as an expert <laughs> in any particular field, except of course, for the operation and development of the brew house uh, brewery. So he was sworn. I'd like Joel to uh, add some color and detail on that 30,000 foot view that I kind of just gave as to what we are proposing here today. And uh, obviously, Joel, I'll jump in if I think uh, that we missed anything, but you know, let's really talk about what the intent is, uh, how it will or won't change overall operations and the impact to the surrounding area. Sure. Uh, again, my name is Joel Brudner. The last name is B-R-U-D. N-E-R, and I'm the managing member of MB1 Belmar, which is a subsidiary entity of MB1 Capital Partners, which is a real estate investment firm that we're involved in. I'm also uh, one of the owners of the Beach House Brewery itself, who is a tenant of MB1 Belmar and the main tenant of the property. Uh, don't want to bore you too much, but I'll give you a little history. Maybe it'll be helpful to understand the process and, and how we came about here, but we acquired the property in 2014 from Herb Friedman and his family uh, when they closed down the Friedman's Bakery building. And uh, we went on an ambitious plan of, uh, of revamping the building, uh, got approvals in late 2014, and basically built uh, the, the property out uh, in new construction, essentially, and re redeveloped the building, uh, housing the Beach House Brewery, and uh, seven additional tenants. Um, basically around the perimeter of the building and the seventh tenant being my office, uh, my partner's office for a real estate firm on the second floor. But at that time, Beach House was a limited brewery, uh, limited uh, li brewery license in New Jersey allowed Beach House to brew for production and distribution, as well as to have a tasting room uh, and have people come and sample and sell their beer on premise. Uh, it did not allow for a lot of things that we anticipated the laws to uh, loosen up down the road, um, such as food, such as um, non, not having restrictive hours or uh, the basics for just tours, but um, it was something that we anticipated uh, bringing this location to Belmar, knowing, uh, you know, that we're right on Main Street, uh, having the proximity to the beach, uh, the marina area, and just having a corner location uh, we felt this was going to be a destination location at some point, and we would make a big enough investment that would warrant us to move forward in some other manner if the state was not going to change the licensing ability, you know, capabilities of what a limited brewery can and can't do. So ultimately, uh, we found our way to acquire the Jack's Tavern property, 
uh, and move that license as Jennifer described over here uh, just as recently as 2020. So we now uh, basically the way that works is the limited brewery kind of was combined with the plenary license from Jack's Tavern. And at the state level, you become a restricted brewery for lack of a better term. And that allows you to serve food as well as all spirits, but still allows us to be a production brewery and distribute off premises as well as on premise. So in doing that, um, it was our goal to become more of a craft uh, location, destination, more of a qualitative place, both for our beer as well as food. And we had within our sites at that point, uh, David Burke as a very prominent uh, food uh, person, chef, uh, if you will, to come in and partner with us on the restaurant side, which we've done. And we opened uh, with David Burke on the restaurant side, as well as the, the tavern side in the beginning of this year. So in March, uh, we fully opened our restaurant. Uh, the, the brewery area serves food as well as spirits. From a uh, physical standpoint, uh, the brewery itself has two levels of operation. The first floor is about a 100-person uh, um, bar room downstairs, which allows service of food and, and seating. The second floor has the existing restaurant that was here from a previous tenant that we annexed as part of the a restricted brewery license and made that the more fine dining room. That has 97 seats. And the rest of the brewery floor in the annex extension of the brewery second floor has 237 seats. So all told, the brewery currently has 437 um, maximum occupancy of seats. Uh, around the perimeter of the building, as I described a little bit earlier, we have um, three tenants on Main Street and three tenant spaces along the uh, Belmar Plaza area, all of which um, are fairly compatible with our uses, especially in the evening. There's one tenant of 800 square feet. That's a restaurant use on Main Street, which is Chris Brandle's restaurant, Jake's Crab Shack, which does have evening hours. The rest of the tenants pretty much are more or less nine to five, Monday through Friday, or closing at lunch. I mean, the bagel uh, restaurant in the back has hours that generally close between two and 3 p.m. Uh, most almost every day. So there is a good compatible use as far as the evening restaurant goes, as far as the timing of people flowing in and out and uh, the parking requirements as well and the operational requirements. Um, I can also answer all the operational questions you have since I have an affiliation with the brewery as well. Well, um, Joel, we Joel, before, into... Joel, before we go to questions, let's talk sure. about what, your what you always expected and hoped for on the roof and why we're actually here today. Getting to that, yep. The reason, you know, obviously, we always had our sights set on this being a great destination location and outdoor dining being, you know, an experience that everyone's seeking and even more so during this past year and a half with what we've gone through with COVID and the, and the desire and, and need for outdoor space. Um, so when we built the brewery building and re redeveloped the, um, uh, the bakery building, we had both stairwells go up to the rooftop as well as the elevator. A couple of reasons. One, we envisioned something take place up here, but more so, um, you know, we, and, and more so we had mechanical systems and we wanted to ease access, but we also structurally built the Northwest corner of the roof so it could house um, tables and, and, and patrons and everything down the road. So this was something we envisioned. Um, right now, the need is more than ever, um, even with some of the COVID restrictions being released and the occupancy levels being released, um, people are still very much more comfortable outside. Um, seasonality is a big, uh, obviously a big factor here. Uh, we'll have limited use of this because of the winds and, and, and different times of year being on a short town. But at the same time, we just felt it was an opportune time to introduce something like this, let people have a unique experience, particularly in Belmar, being able to see the marina overlooking uh, the downtown area. So what we're looking to do is add you know, no fixed furniture, um, just a bar up there with uh, the only fixed uh, fixture might be the would be the bar with some canopy, but the canopy would be more for sunshade rather than uh, permanent structure at all. So it's kind of parachute material. So it'd be more shaded area. The, the tables and chairs are going to be more of an outdoor fixture, similar to what we have on our second floor deck. 
Um, they're, they're shown when you'll see some of the exhibits, they'll shown as four tops and the four tops allows us to combine them into eights and that type of thing. But we thought for a best visual, we'd show um, the maximum amount of four tops that we'd be looking to carry out here. So people could, um, from a um, entrance standpoint, like I said, both stairwells as well as the elevator come up to the rooftop. There'd be a main stairwell on the northern end of the building. Hey, hey Joel, Joel, why don't we let yes. Dan? Why don't we let Dan talk about the okay. layout and access and all sure. of that kind of thing? Okay. Um, I think going back to the operations. So when you say it's seasonal, meaning it's not going to be covered like some rooftops that you see in cities, it really will depend on weather permitting for the use. It, of it's definitely going to depend on weather permitting. And, you know, hopefully you do get you do get nice days once in a while in November and October where you can, you know, take advantage of it. But it's something that, you know, typically would be probably a 90 day window where you can really have multiple days in a week uh, to and, take advantage of it. And, that's, and I that's, hate to say a dirty word here, but having grown <laughs> up in the area, I'm familiar with it. This isn't going to be like a nightclub, like a DJ's. This is only going to be used in association with the restaurant slash brewery uh, underneath, which is why you have it set up with so many tables for dining and for patrons in that regard. Correct. I mean, this is going to be an extension of the use uh, of the second floor brewery uh, for food, beverages, that type of thing. The only thing I can envision is since we are, um, we are hosting several events, weddings, things like that throughout the year. I can envision a standing cocktail hour here before a wedding or some type of corporate event. Um, but beyond, the, beyond that, I, you're right. It's not, a, it's not going to be a club. It's not a nightclub. It's not a... Uh, and so uh, much so that your person-to-person -person transfer of your license from the council actually restricts it as such. So it, it couldn't does. become that because the liquor license transfer from the mayor and council actually prohibits it. Correct. And then with regard to when you, when you talk about um, if cocktail hour, you're not proposing any loudspeakers or any type of music uh, on the rooftop, except perhaps acoustic. Sure. I think we'd like to, we, you know, just like any, any other outdoor facility, we'd like to have, you know, a similar acoustic type music, you know, ending at a reasonable time, whatever the, the, the town ordinance would be. Um, and uh you know, simply maybe some jazz or some light uh, acoustic music to supplement the, uh, the ambience up there. Okay, and how does your uh, trash pickup and recycling pickup work now? And do you anticipate there to be a great increase on the demand? And if so, how would it be addressed? Well, I, I, you know, as, as far as an increase on demand, it, it's just an increase in logistics uh, options uh, because I'm, you know, I'm not sure that uh, that'll be any great greater demands, let's per se, but upstairs, you know, we'll treat it like our operation. It's very clean. I mean, first of all, the brewery is extremely clean. We're, we pay so much attention to detail on anything related to trash removal and odors and everything else. So this would be an extension of the restaurant. Uh, we'd have, you know, receptacles up there, but we have the elevator. So we'd be able to, you know, move bins in and out as we need. Um, it's something that our management staff just routinely pays detailed attention to. Uh, okay, so it would be constant, constant policing, constant busing, nothing left for any, a per, uh, any period of time out there exposed. That would be the ideal way and to address do this. You, do you use a private hauler for pickup? Um, Delisa uh, is the private hauler that we use, okay. and we, we kind of temper their pickups because we do control the trash for the entire building, all the tenants. Uh, we pool all the tenants. As a matter of fact, our employee goes to each of our tenants and removes their trash because we don't want that kind of problem with, with relation to the brewery. So we can't rely on someone else, you know, calling for a trash pickup. So we take care of all of our tenants' trash. Okay. And so to that end, in the event there's additional trash, uh, you could always increase the frequency of the pickups like you would in the summer typically anyway. Correct. Like we just did this past week, knowing that we're going into the warmer months, we've already ordered and already gotten into our uh, more frequent routine of pickup. Okay. I believe, Mr. Chair, those are the only affirmative questions I have for Joel, recognizing that the architect and the traffic engineer are going to testify. I would open him to questions from the board and then in turn the public. Well, we'll hold the public comments till the end, the questions okay. till the end. 
Um, and the board, I think we can hold the questions to the end and come back to, to Joel if we have any. Okay. Um, so let's Great. move on with the other, uh, the other testimonies, if you would. Okay, I'd like to introduce our project architect and he was sworn and I'd ask him to take a moment to provide the board with his uh, educational and work experience qualifications so I can submit him as an expert in the field of architecture. Absolutely, Dan Governelli, G-O-B-E-R-N-A-L-E -E of Barlow Governelli and Associates Architects located at 92 Mantelloking Road, Brick, New Jersey 08723. Licensed architect in the state of New Jersey, hold a bachelor's of architecture from NJIT. I've testified in front of numerous boards throughout the state and have done numerous commercial and residential properties and developments uh, in my short six years of being licensed. Any objections, Mr. Chair? No, we accept uh, he's qualified as a witness, as an expert in architecture. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dan, what I'd like to do because, and, and forgive me everybody and nobody groan when I say this, but a picture's worth a thousand words. So what I'd like to do is share my screen and have you walk the board through the color rendered images. I think it's a lot easier to understand than the uh, black and white rendering. So let me know when you, everybody can see that. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So Dan, starting with the first uh, slide, why don't you orient the board as to the directional uh, layout of this and what we're proposing on the rooftop? So looking at this photograph to the top of the image would be the south located to the left is east. So that's Main Street located to the north at the bottom is 8th Avenue and to the right would be west and that's looking at the Belmar Mall uh, and Route 35 area. Um, looking at this image, we're looking at the roof of the existing building. This was a drone photograph taken recently this spring. And we're looking at the northwest or the, the bottom right of the image being the area of principal development for the roof as the new rooftop amenity. Um, you'll see in the image to the top is an existing grain silo, fl uh, flower silo. Uh, from the, uh, the old Friedman's. Uh, we have the stair and storage area also to the top. Um, then there is an existing clear story roof, which is where the uh, tanks for the main brewery operation exist. There's actually windows that look down into that. So that was a desirable area for tables and chairs at night. The brewery tanks would be lit and exposed and would create an ambiance for somebody sitting at those tables. Uh, located down on 8th Avenue is a stair tower, and the elevator is located to the far east. So in order to create all of the connections to access, we had to create the boardwalk basically to connect the elevator for accessibility and the two stairs for uh, egress and ingress to the uh, restaurant area. Um, and then in the center of that image is a blue uh, square. That's the location of a proposed bar with the uh, canopy located above it. And let me just, before we go on to the next photo, I just want to take a look at the roof schematic and let me orient it in the same direction as we were just looking for ease of reference. And the area where we're proposing the seating, where you have dotted lines, which says habitable roof area and habitable roof area, that's the only area we're proposing for any tables, chairs, or seating. The other portions that have the boardwalk or the flooring or the finish, so you, like you said, is purely for access to the stairs and the elevator, correct? That's correct. So the, the stairs and the elevator exist today. We don't have control over their placement. So the, uh, the two sections beyond the main usable area are strictly for access. Okay. And while I have this up, the and, and Joel had mentioned it, but I really wanted it to come through your testimony from a building code perspective. Uh, have the stairs been designed in such a way that they meet the egress requirements for a use like this on the roof? Absolutely. They even contain double doors, which are a little atypical of an egress stairwell. Um, so they're actually twice as wide. 
uh, as a typical stair, and they traverse all the way down to the exit of dis or the level of exit discharge at the ground. So that is all already in place and is set up for emergency escape. Okay, and it the size of the stairwells are sufficient for the anticipated occupancy on the roof as well as in the building. We meet all of those applicable codes? Absolutely, yes. Okay, and as long as we're talking about codes and before we go back to the pretty pictures, the existing plumbing facilities and other building related facilities are, are all compliant with what we're proposing. That is correct. We took a look at the existing fixture count and the uh, proposed occupancy and existing occupancy and found that the fixtures provided on the second floor are adequate and meet the provisions of the National Standard Plumbing Code. Okay. Now I, um, I'm scrolling down to the second sheet and this is, you wanna to explain to the board what this is? This is a view that is not directly overhead. We're looking towards the south in perspective. You can see 8th Avenue at the bottom of the image. We have the existing outdoor deck space located to the northeast corner of the building. And you can see the flavor of that, which is um, emulating into the new roof uh, component in terms of material and uh, feel and layout. Okay. And um, while you haven't chosen the materials, you're comfortable and as a requirement of the TDRC that they will be um, compatible with the existing materials, meaning it will be a similar type wire railing, the flooring materials will be similar in earth tone uh, and or color and, and of that nature? Yes, that is our intent is to continue the harmony of the materials and colors to this roof deck. Okay, and then also, I, as you can see my cursor, I'm pointing to what we have uh, put up there as a visual screen to screen the patrons from seeing the uh, less sightly uh, mechanical equipment on the roof. Uh, what are you showing that as and what are the uh, various options for how that would work? I know that was a question from the TDRC. The mechanical screening will be a similar composite or natural material that will complement the color of the decking and the colors of the building. Yes, it is there to uh, stop a visual of the uh, people at the, the deck looking onto the roof and seeing all of the equipment. Also, it will help a little bit in noise as well and shield some of the rooftop equipment noise. Okay. And then I see that in, in any area where there is rooftop equipment over here on the southwest uh, portion, and even over here, uh, we're proposing it all to be consistent. That's correct. Okay. And this view? This view is looking to the southwest. Uh, you can see the Shark River in the background and really the, uh, the highlight of uh, being on the roof deck in terms of experience. Um, you can see there's nothing shown in the way of furniture on the northeast side, other than the existing elevator tower, which pops up at the east side there and the boardwalk that leads to the roof deck area. Okay, so the main view for this is really uh, to, the, to the northwest to see the sunsets over the river. Absolutely, yes. Okay, and then the last one, um, the only exterior change to the building other than the roof is relative to the existing beach house sign on the western elevation. So let's talk about that. So currently there is a structure which holds the beach house sign on top of the existing roof. We're looking to take it off of the dunnage which is located on the roof transpose it down to the facade. So we're actually lowering the signage down onto the building, which the facade can easily accommodate its size and not overpower that facade. And um, that will clear the view of the patrons from the roof deck of that sign. Okay, so we're not changing that sign. We're merely relocating it onto the building facade. That is correct. Okay, and I think another important item that we may have missed in going over it, we're not proposing to put this railing or these chairs at the edge of the building. We're actually, as can seem best in this uh, rendering, 
setting them back from the building edge, uh, how many feet approximately? They are set back four feet from the building edge just to give a buffer so that the railing is not pronounced right on the roof coping. Uh, gives a little bit of space there for um, a little debris catch or uh, just a, a space for a safety net um, in the event that uh, some debris got blown around or uh, that, uh, that somebody you know, could possibly trip or something. The guardrails would be 42 inches tall. We're not concerned about safety, they would meet code but both for visual and for safety, we opted to offset it back four feet. Okay, and the plan that's before the board and what's being depicted on this rendering shows uh, a configuration with 152 seats, is that correct? Yes. So while the configuration may change and the tables may become four to uh, eight tops and the like, if the board were to limit the rooftop usage to a maximum of 152 people, would that, that's something that would be acceptable because in your opinion, that's what would comfortably fit up there based on the square footage? Yes. Okay, and to speak to that, because as we're gonna hear from the traffic engineer, the redevelopment zone parking requirement is a function of square footage or growth of the, of the square footage of the area. So of the roof deck seating and bar area, uh, we have approximately 3,090 square feet proposed. Was that accurate? That's accurate of the net square footage of usable area designated to tables and chairs. Okay, great. Um, I think I hit everything. I'm sure that if there are any questions based on the uh, board chair's representation before that the questions will come at the end, we will ask. So I ask that you please stick around in case there are any questions. May I move on to my next witness, Mr. Yes, chair? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. I'd like to now introduce Maurice Rochet and uh, he was sworn and I ask him, knowing how long he's been practicing and how many applications we've done together to briefly share with the board the benefit of his uh, experience. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening, members of the board. Very briefly um, testified before approximately 200 uh, towns in New Jersey over 1,500 times. Testified in court uh, several, several times, including federal court, superior court, and municipal court on matters of traffic, uh, safety, and parking. Okay. Thank you. Would submit them as an expert in uh, engineering, particularly traffic. Is that acceptable, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, we accept him as a uh, traffic uh, expert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Maurice, you submitted a uh, traffic and parking analysis, which I understand was based on the two previous analyses that were submitted in support of the original application. Without repeating it at length, Please talk about what you assessed and, and how you think the additional rooftop uh, usage will uh, fit into the existing seaport okay. redevelopment, both with regard to traffic and parking. Very good. Um, let me summarize everything first, and then I'll go through some details. But I would tell you, Mr. Chairman, that this is an application where traffic and parking is not really uh, a... a a very important issue or a delicate issue at all. Um, so in short, my opinion is that uh, 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 parking is adequate as it is today. And this addition of the rooftop will not disturb the parking balance in town. Um, having said that, let me go through some numbers and some ideas as to why I came up with this decision. Uh, as the architect indicated, uh, if you apply the ordinance, uh, we end up with five spaces as a requirement. So the number is very insignificant. Um, as you know, there is um, a lot of parking opportunities around this building. There is a parking lot, which is known as the plaza. I believe it has 207 parking spaces. There is the parking lot by the train station. Maurice, uh, yes. uh, Maurice, I need to just jump in because I don't want the board to think that we are um, that we are not taking very seriously the intensity of influx of people in the summertime, mm -hmm. and that there is a parking problem in town. I think that 
what we're what the applicant is trying to say is we're not going to make it appreciably worse as it relates to what is currently existing. So I, I don't want to, to mischaracterize that we're saying there's no issue and there's tons of spaces open. So let, let's talk, I, I just wanna put the lens in that, in that light. Because I, 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 I don't want the board to think that you're somehow mm -hmm. minimizing the intensity in the summertime. I'm not. What I'm minimizing is the impact of this change. Okay, great. Intensity. And uh, let me dig into why this change is, is minimal. And there is a several reasons um, um, for, for that. One of them is the availability of mass transit, which is not the case in many of the shore communities, is the walkability of the area, uh, is the fact that uh, there are different uses that peak at different times. If you take this building in particular, it has some um, uh, restaurant uses, but then it has other uses that are not restaurants, such, for example, as the, the school, the office uh, space, the bagel shop, which is a restaurant, but I believe they close at 2.30, uh, the Big Frog um, uh, store that closes also uh, and does not open in the evening, and the juice bar that also does not open in the evening. So you have about half or more of the uses that do not function in the evening. And the reason that's important is that a rooftop bar functions in the evening. It does not um, um, peak during midday, for example, when the sun is baking at you know 12 noon or, or 2 p.m. Well, Maurice, uh, yeah. we're, not, we're not suggesting that we're not going to have it open in the afternoon. What you're stressing is, is that the peak usage is anticipated correct. in the evening. That is correct. Yep. And if you are a, uh, a user of a rooftop bar, you know the ideal time is when the weather is very appropriate. Um, we all know if it's raining, if it's windy, if it's too hot, if it's too cold, a rooftop bar will, will not be usable or not be attractive um, to be used. So that also minimizes the times during the year that the rooftop bar is, is used. Um, then you have also the, uh, the prevalence of, um, of uh, shared trips, uh, Uber, Lyft, and, uh, and others. Then you have another factor which is that, uh, and this happens to me, happens to all of us, um, many, even most of the patrons that come to the rooftop bar are already in town, in the marina, maybe came to the beach or come, they came to other uh, facilities. So um, uh, we cannot equate a, um, uh, a, um, a party coming to a car, to a trip, uh, to a parking space. So when you look at all these um, factors, and you look at the fact that uh, the ordinance only requires five spaces, it becomes a non-issue. And, um, and I can state uh, very comfortably that uh, this will not have um, any, uh, I'm gonna call it appreciable change to parking in the immediate vicinity of uh, this uh, proposed use or proposed addition to use. Okay. And uh, your report, and now going back, your report had indicated, um, and the ordinance allows you to basically take credit for public parking that's within 500 feet that's of correct. the subject property. So while we're not saying there are reserved spaces there for us, uh, which lots are within 500, which public lots are within 500 feet that, like the current uh, patrons would be able to use, any additional patrons would be able to use if they didn't already walk, ride their bikes, or uh, use one of the car services. That, that is correct. Okay, the so parking okay. lot, by the way, is within 500 feet. Right, and the, uh, and the marina parking lot? That's also pretty close, um, actually. All the parking along the marina, along um, the, I'm oh, sorry, uh, along the tracks, for example, is approximately 400 feet. Uh, the parking uh, uh, on the marina side is a little bit over 600 feet. So we're very, very close to that walkable distance. By the way, ITE considers a quarter of a mile, which is approximately 1,200 feet to be a walkable area, but the ordinance uh, has 500 feet. And when you say ITE, just for purposes of the record. Oh, yes, that's thank the, you. Um, that's the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Okay, so yeah. in your expert opinion, 
um, you know, well, the well, it might not meet the ordinance 500 foot definition in your expert opinion, there is substantial parking, including the marina, well within the walking distance that would be generally accepted in the traffic engineering. Yes, also, uh, don't forget, there is also parking on, um, on 10th Avenue. There's that double parking row in the center of the road. Uh, there is angle parking up on, uh, on the same street. Uh, and there is available parking, obviously, as we all know, on, on Main, on 8th, and on, uh, on other roadways. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. I can't wait for this to be open, by the way, guys. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, so, any other testimony, Ms. Krumko? No, I have no other affirmative testimony. Obviously, should questions come up, I'd reserve the right to put a witness back on. Absolutely. So we'll uh, turn questions first over to Doug, and then we'll go to Christine and Sam. Doug, any questions from your perspective? You're muted, so please open that mute. Christine, excuse me, not Christine. Excuse me, Mr. Um, can you show me the location of the site being removed, the location of where it's being relocated, and give me dimensions so that we know net net we're not increasing the area of sign. Okay, my my I think you said sign. You cut out a little bit, Doug. So I apologize. I apologize. Let me see if I can speak slower. Am I correct in my understanding that there would be a relocation? Of signage. Yes. Can so you the board sure. the sign will be removed. Yes. So I, what I'd showed, like. I'm sorry. I think you showed us the signage as to where it's going to be relocated. And I'd like to know if net net we are increasing or decreasing signage area. Okay. Certainly. So what I'd like to for, the short answer is net net zero net. Same sign being relocated. What I'd like to do is just move in as A8, the uh, elevations, which were part of the original packet that were approved in front of the board. And, and I think it depicts that best if I share my screen. And, and the reason we didn't use these to show it is because it only sh really shows the location. So if you look at the bottom drawing, you can see that as was testified to by Mr. Governale, there's an existing beach house brewery sign that, that is, uh, extends above the roof line. And all we're doing is removing that structure and placing it onto the facade. There will be no change in the sign itself. Thank you very much. So it's just taking it off the top and putting it on the building. That's it. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be heavy handed with anyone, but I want to make sure that the board's expectations are consistent with the owner's expectations so that in the future we can say, yes, we discussed this, we have an understanding. Sure. Some vague reference to peak usage. I'd like to know what are the hours of operation? Great. By, by I mean, start time, end time, season. I think we can start if we can just start there and what you anticipate peak usage. I'll just try to use that as a time reference. Sure. And I'm going to have Joel respond to that and, and forgive me in my haste. That was one of the things that you asked <laughs> for in your preamble and I forgot it. So I apologize. So, Joel, let's talk about um, the hours of operation, both for the uh, overall building as well as the rooftop. Well, right now, the building itself, the hours are, are varied depending on the time of year. But uh, for the most part, um, you know, most of the beach house facility is open to the public around noon on most days where we have lunch. Uh, certainly the retail store is open at that time every day. Uh, but it, the hours extend anywhere from, you know, 10 o'clock till one in the morning, I guess we have uh, or whatever the ordinance permits us to do. Uh, so those hours haven't been set in stone. So basically, in the summer months, we're starting to increase the hours. They'll probably run generally to midnight in the, in the overall facility. But I know we have the capability to run, um, you know, till two in the morning, I guess, where the, where the ordinance is. But that's generally not our intention. As far as the rooftop goes, you know, it would have on, on days where it's compatible weather. You know, we might have, you know, weekend days where we'll, we'll have lunch up there. So it might open at 12. 
and uh, it would go in into the extended evening hours. Now, if there were music up there, we'd understand that whatever music, even acoustic, whatever would be, you know, turned off at some time, whatever the ordinance says. But I can see that being open on compatible hours because people would be sitting up there enjoying, you know, a light, light meal or, or drinks till maybe, maybe 11, 12 o'clock at night. Um, but I, I, we generally don't have hours that extend to one, two in the morning, although we're allowed to have them. So, I, so I, you know, I'm not sure I'm answering the question exactly the way the board would want guess, me to, but that's generally how let, we let me let me let me rephrase it then for you. So what you're saying is you typically go until about midnight, but you would ask the board to allow you to have the same hours that any other permitted use or permitted restaurant, whether indoor or outdoor, would have, and you would abide by the ordinance both with regard to hours, music, and noise. Of course, yes, that's that's well put. Let me let me express the concern that I think board members may have, but again, they may have no concern. The operation outside on the lower level now, how late does that operate? On the uh, outdoor level, on the yes. second floor, yes. it operates the same hours as the overall brewery hours. And again, that that could vary from a weeknight maybe to being till 10 o'clock to a weekend being to 12 o'clock or maybe even later. But Joel, you license... don't have... Joel, you don't have a restriction on it. You're saying Correct. typically, but you don't have a cutoff or a restriction. The outdoor second floor operates the same hours as the restaurant and the brewery. Right. Our license restriction is based on the ordinance. So we, ha we don't have any further restriction than the operating ordinance in Belmar right now. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I'm just mindful that as the municipality begins to develop mixed use commercial properties and across the street. There are residential properties now that you cross from. And I, and I guess it, to the extent that you're fine with where you are and there haven't been any complaints, it's not my place to go any further. Thank uh, you. Peak usage. Is there a peak usage of your facility at this point in time? I, I know what your hours of operation are. Mm -hmm. Can we expect to see the greatest burden you will, assuming summer months, assuming this day, um, I, I expect you don't anticipate that the interior will be as busy as people wanted to get on the roof. Um, that would be my expectation, the, 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 especially today with, uh, with all the COVID demands and, and influence on our lifestyles. I think that's true. Our outdoor deck is in great demand, but it varies seasonally, spring and fall. Saturday afternoons through early evening and, and Sunday afternoons through early evening is generally our peak, um, you know, as well as in season, I would say, you know, in the early evenings, probably from six to nine could be the peak times. This, you know, this generally has not been a peak at 12 midnight or 11 because we're, we're driving a restaurant use and we're driving a more a more uh, craft oriented customer who, you know, is spending a little more money. It's not volume, it's more quality than volume. So they're not necessarily volume, late night volume drinkers. Um, so uh, it, it's a different clientele. That's what we've experienced thus far. I, I would expect that to continue with our partnership with David Burke. That's really what we're, what we're seeking. Um, but I, I would expect that in the summer evening, you know, there would be people up there you know, wanting to enjoy it from, you know, between 10 and 12, but it might not be our peak time. Is there presently, and can you give the board some flavor? Again, I'm, I'm only trying to try to give the board a, a flavor. With comparison to the second floor outdoor area, what's your season? Are you still serving people in there in December? Or are you still serving? <laughs> you get, if you if you get a nice day, people want to be outside. In, in December, a nice day might be 50 degrees. And people would love to sit outside in 50 degrees with a coat on and enjoy a beverage just to be outside in the fresh air. So, I mean, okay. it's, it's yeah. but, we don't want to close it off. We want to leave the opportunities open for when we do have a day. But in general, I just don't see too many, too many days in late November, December, January, February, et cetera, where you don't have winds that prohibit people from being up there. So, so it is definitely going to be a seasonal Joel, Operation. realistically, and again, I don't think Doug is asking you about letting someone walk outside to sip mm -hmm. a beer, 
I think he's talking about the full restaurant usage and service and seating outside is going to be in the spring, summer, and early fall. Uh, you're not going to be serving meals out there in mid-January. Without question, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. And, and, again, so, and so I'm not trying to hide you, sir. I, what you're saying is we're going to expect that parking demand to be I, I apologize. You're, you're fading in and out say, of my mind. So, and again, I'm not trying to be be cute with you, but we, the, the planning board can expect that the parking demand will be three seasons. Yes, well, but I, let I, me, I have. Okay. Let me just jump. Let me just jump in. So, uh, you know, certainly our restaurant might be as busy in the fall and spring as it is in the summertime. But I think the attendant parking demand for the other seat, more summer season related uses and uh, for, for the beach related influx, I think uh, the demand in the area goes down. So uh, again, we're, we're hoping um, that the restaurant becomes a vital member of your business community and is popular all year round. And uh, is always busy. That's the intention of redevelopment and that's the intention of our proposal. But I think that uh, as was testified to by Maurice, you know, the summer months are really the months where there is competition for parking. Uh, and, and I just want to make that distinction. And does it agree with that distinction? I'm not trying to make you a witness, Ms. Grimko. I don't want No, I know. Joel, do you agree with that? I do. I did, I act, did I accurately portray what you've shared in the past and we just didn't necessarily articulate tonight? You did. And I thought for clarity, you, you, you translated it well. Um, any objection to the applicant prior to placement submitting uh, once you finally narrow down uh, the actual materials, depictions of mechanical screening the railing, tables, chairs, just to make sure of the consistency? 100%. And Mr. Kovacs, the TDRC is requiring the same thing. So certainly we can submit them to both. I, I hadn't heard you address the TDRC stuff. If, if, if what you're telling me is you're going to still address that, I'll withdraw this question. Yes, we will address that. Uh, okay. Um, awning. Uh, what I'm referring to is as the awning. It's not an awning. It's the covering over the seated bar area uh, that you identified before. Again, no difficulty in providing us with materials as to what the awning is going to be made of. And we can be assured that there's not going to be any additional lettering or signage on the awning. That's correct, Mr. Kovacs. Okay. Um, you did say, uh, well, I guess my question is, as to the service areas, the portable service areas, do they contain trash receptacles or, or what do they consist of? What can, what can we expect to be located on that rooftop in addition to tables and chairs and the seating areas? Joel. Well, you'll typically have, you know, typical waiter stations where you will have receptacles, you'll have tray areas, you'll have silverware stations, different, you know, accoutrements, that type of thing. Uh, you may also have some light cooking areas that are temporary from time to time, as we discussed at the TDRC meeting. Um, but it's essentially, you know, just waiter stations, it's typical what you find in a restaurant. The predominance of the cooking, except for maybe some special events where we might grill on the rooftop or have some sushi, uh, that type of, uh, you know, easily accessible food would come from the kitchen on the second floor. Are there going to be trash receptacles on the roof? Sure. And where do you anticipate they would be located? Uh, <laughs> Well, I think they'll be in, uh, in areas that the operation calls for. They will probably be in, uh, in, in different spots that are convenient or hidden, you know, so they're aesthetically in the right spot. Uh, we haven't plotted that out on this plan, as you, as you know, uh, but there'll, there'll be enough there operationally. This is what we're, we're experts in, running, running restaurants and, and taverns. So uh, I'm sure you want them to look as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Again, any difficulty in providing us with some depiction as to what those receptacles would be. And once you do narrow it down, where you anticipate they'll be located? 
we'll be happy to do so. Thank you. Um, again, that, I'm checking off some of the control things, tables and chairs. Uh, lighting, exterior lighting. You anticipate lighting underneath the, again, please forgive me for forward an awning. I don't know what else to call it. The I don't want, I feel silly calling it the parish. Sure. <laughs> lighting underneath the, that and any other areas where there will be lighting how will it be screened to contain the lighting on site if it will be screened? And again, I'm going to tell you, my last question is going to be, and you've already guessed it, Mr. Brother, any problems in providing us with your pictures? No. And what I'd okay. like to, what I'd like to do is Joel is let the architect speak to the lighting, Fine. Um, you know, by way of just brief summary from a high level view, there is no site lighting as we typically understand it. No light poles, no, um, no, no building mounted lighting. Instead, it will be more like deck string lighting under the bar canopy and uh, perhaps along the decorative wall and the railings. And it'll be for safety and ambiance not to light anything up. So with that- the only, Yeah, the only thing I'll add is that in the doghouse roof where the, the brew house is, there's existing glass walls to that rooftop. So there is existing lighting now that's been there since we've opened that lights up the tanks but it's more of a glow it nothing really comes out of right. that other than offsite so it's right, just but more Joel, on that's, the roof. Joel, that's inside that isn't what he's asking about Correct, that was but i'm just i'm just saying you know just if anybody's worried about darkness there will be an additional glow from that because we're not putting up like you said any site lighting per se that you might see in a normal site plan. i think i'm, I'm they're more concerned more about the impact it may have Offsite. They're the not street. worried right. about darkness, Joel. They're right. worried about. And I'm trying to tell stuff. you that contained let's, on the site has been there. Let's let the architect uh, offer that testimony. Okay, and if we can hold that for a second, we'll put that on to hold. I'm sure you'll remember to do that. Number of employees or number of additional employees serving this area. And again, I'm going to tie it back. Where are they going to park? And can you make arrangements to make sure that I'm assuming a shift is going to be anywhere from six to eight hours, that they're sort of encouraged to park in areas that perhaps are, it may require them to walk a little bit, but again, so that the parking is close to your facility. Sort of a two-part question. So how, so many is, additional, how many additional employees, Joel, per shift do you expect for the rooftop? I don't know because we don't know what hours of operation, what's going on elsewhere in the building. My, my, my understanding is that in the parking calculation, it, it takes into consideration employees as well, doesn't it? It does, yes. So, I mean, it's a hard question to answer. Do we encourage our employees to park as far away from the premises as possible when they take their own cars? Yes, we do. As to that, and so that I'm clear, going back to your resolution, 2020, dash 145 resolution. There is an indication in paragraph 6B. I'm, I'm, I know you're nodding, but actually I'm hoping that your I know. person is, is getting up to speed on <laughs> or your parking person is getting up to speed. Do you have that before you, sir? You asking me? I, I, I'm asking if you have it before you. No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to represent as best I can. Okay. There's a breakdown is as follows. First floor bar area, 97 persons. Second floor restaurant, 100 persons. Second floor brewery slash tap, 240. Mm -hmm. Total number there was 437. Okay. Are we, is the one, I guess we've identified, is the 152 in addition to that number or in within that number? It's in addition to Mr. Kovacs. Okay, so that where we were originally anticipating an operation of 437, because that was persons on the bar area, persons on the second floor, persons on the tap room, that was 437. We're gonna expect because of seating to have at least another capacity issue of 152. And then on top of that, and this is, goes back to my other question, on top of that employees. I just want to Correct. make clear in what I'm running because if the answer is yes, that's fine. And yeah, the, the the answer the answer is yes, but to to the extent that additional employees are needed, the 152 capacity on the rooftop is seating. That's correct. Okay. 
And and net net, you do have the engineering report that that basically says net net, this additional really only requires nine point seven spaces. Right, and with the shared parking that's allowed, it averages down to about five, five spaces. And again, just so that the board doesn't miss anything or is accused of missing anything, I just want to get that out there. And those are the questions that I have. I'll leave you to address any of the other TDRC uh, issues. Uh, and again, I'm assuming just that the relocate the existing sign at the front that you're relocating to the rear, or what I refer to as the rear. No, no, no. It's on the rear and it's staying on the rear. It's just going from on top of dropping the roof, down. dropping okay. down. Correct. Is there illumination on that sign? Joel, is that illuminated? Yes, yes. And it'll be illuminated the same way? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. Uh, Christine, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? No, I really don't have any questions. You know, I think the biggest uh, concern with this site um, would be parking generated. And I think that uh, the applicant has thoroughly addressed that. Thank you. Sam, any comments from you? Uh, no questions. Uh, it's a good application. I believe the, everything that our letter was covered. So okay. thank you, guys. All right, very good. Given that, I'll roll to the board for questions. Uh, Rick, you're on the top of my screen, so I'm going to start with you. Okay, just for my own clarification, uh, we have approved 457, and now we're adding another 152 for occupancy, so that brings the total to 609. 437, uh, I think is the number. 437 plus 152, right? Correct, correct. So that's 609. Correct. Okay. Uh, another question, and this is in general. It, it, That's it, it 589, affects. by the way. Oh, 432 you said 437. Okay, I'm sorry. I had four. Yeah, 437 okay. plus 152. All I just right. need to correct that base number. Okay, but it is substantially more. Um, and, and the question I've got, in, and this is like for our planner too. Um, you know, we took a lot of spaces out of that Acme parking lot uh, when we opened it up for some of the other uh, restaurants that are existing there. How many spaces did we lose when we did that? I would say approximately uh, 50, 40 to 50. Um, and what I did, I went out to Maurice, the... Maurice, yeah. this is a question for their planner, I think he Oh, ah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, and this is, you know, I, again, right, all I, my clarification. I, I don't know the exact number of spaces, but I would agree with Maurice. It's probably in the range of 40 to 50. Okay. Okay. And just Mr. for purposes, if I, I'm going to swear both Sam and Christine. I realized I hadn't done that. Before. Yeah, please. Sam and Christine, you want testimony you give before the board to be the truth, the whole truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Meyer, going back to that, um, Going back to your question, and just to, to, to give a little more detail on the TDRC, I know that uh, the board chair was there. One of the comments that came out of the TDRC is that um, the borough and the TDRC is gonna recommend to the mayor and council that they holistically look at the shared parking availability in the borough as a whole in the downtown and, and do a true assessment as to what's available and, and what would be needed. And I think that um, the comment that was made was it's not necessarily in the back of this particular applicant. Um, it's a borough wide issue that needs to be looked at. And I believe that that is something that the mayor and council will be looking at. Additionally, um, I did reach out to Rachel, uh, Rachel, I'm sorry, April uh, in advance with regard to those areas which are allowed to be used for outdoor parking. And, and again, I think that correct me if I'm wrong, that was a um, COVID related allowance and that that likely is not going to be permanent. And certainly I anticipate it won't be permanent in the height of the summer when the, those parking spaces are most needed. Oh, okay. I, I, I agree with that. I know it's a, it's a temporary situation, but it is a current situation. So, um, all right. With respect to uh, all the other items that Doug touched on, I, I I'm okay with that, but I, you know, I do have, I mean, we, 
constantly have problems with parking here. So. Right, and, and one of the things Doug and I did speak about in advance, and if the board is to vote this in favor, would be that you know we work with the governing body to satisfy them as well with regard to the parking and you know whatever that may need may mean we would work with them and we would certainly accept any type of condition like that. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Mr. Lindsay, please. You're, you're muted, Mr. Lindsay, if you're speaking. There it is. There you go. Uh, thank you. Rick actually spoke almost my thoughts exactly. Everything that we're dealing with on the, on the board here, certainly related to anything near Main Street, Seaport redevelopment, that's parking, parking, parking. And, and that's, that's a concern here. Um, overall, I personally like the project. I, I think it'll I bring some value to Belmar, uh, but everything is so really tight there. It's just a comment here, no real questions. Uh, if everybody has good intentions, I, I'd like to believe you find a way to make it all work. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of people going to be jammed in, in a, one area in the summertime. That's just kind of obvious. Um, that's just a comment. Thank you. Mr. Valente. You're muted again. You were flipping back and forth for a second. Still muted, Nick. Good to hear you. There you go. There okay, you, go. Uh, you know, uh, getting, getting the buttons right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, in the original application uh, for the uh, beer house uh, de redevelopment plan, were the bill the rooftop plans incorporated as a potential air expansion area, or the, this uh, completely over and above? So uh, this is the, the rooftop was always the idea from the developer but it was not part of the approved habitable space. So this is in addition to the approved habitable space. So it was not, it was not referenced in the, aside from referencing potential, it was not incorporated in any way within the original application. Cor that is correct, Mr. Valente. Um, in terms of burden proof and the, uh, the, the, uh, the parking, um, I was in the uh, marina today and um, uh, I had to, uh, at approximately 2 p.m., and I had to park a considerable distance, um, and today's the kind of day on a Friday, not a weekend, and um, sharing the experience of seeing people park anywhere to get to their destinations. I'm still, you know, repeating everyone's concern that uh, until a parking solution is developed, um, what I would li I like to ask after I finish my questions is just uh, how do you come to a conclusion that there is no substantial adverse impact? But let me finish uh, my questions. Uh, silverware, glass, and ceramic plates, or are we talking about recyclables, paper plates, plastic cups, and things of that sort? Joel? Um, we, we haven't fully... Uh, vetted that out, but uh, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't have the same uh, same materials we use on our our second floor deck, which is normally you know knives and forks and plates and everything else, and we're able to police it very well. Right. So I don't anticipate uh, we don't want anything flying around there in the way of a empty paper cup or something like that as well. I think we can manage it. Right. I know I, I I've seen the experience of uh, you have to. Um, weigh things down at uh, the Ninth Avenue Pier and I see the rooftop uh, wind being issue and uh, dispersal uh, an issue. And uh, if you would commit to um, non-disposable uh, recyclable items, and even if they were recyclable, would they be limited to type one and two, which are the only two recyclables we uh, collect in the town? Um, before you move on, Mr. Valenti, I'd like to hear from Joel on that. You asked for a commitment. I'm not sure we heard it. 
Uh, maybe you could just repeat that, please. I'm, I'm not exactly would sure. You, okay, would you commit to non-recyclable, you know, re standard silverware plates and glasses for service? And uh, But the second part of your question was if we went to any recyclables that would be in the particular class that's acceptable? Um, I find I find that most of them are not recyclable per the uh, per our town standards. Um, that's why we have a recycling problem of more stuff getting into the uh, recycling program than can be handled, and then it's uh, disposed of as, as an extra cost. Yeah. So I so think the question I, I'd like is to, I'd like to limit my question to recyclable and non-recyclable. Um, okay. Well, you I, consider well, one thing I will say is that any recycle we don't participate in in the boroughs. Uh, trash hauling, we, we pay for our own recycling and handle our own refuse. So to that extent, I'd like to have some flexibility that if we do choose to have any type of plastics or anything else, they will conform to a recyclable material and we, we will handle it offsite ourselves. Okay. Um, now, there were no, I did not see any floor plans prior to the meeting. So I really didn't get a chance to look at, at, at the, all the details and I'm going through this for the first time. Um, I know in terms of a lighting plan, there's uh, lumens and uh, envelopes, uh, um, contours uh, of, uh, of lighting. And uh, uh, in terms of acoustic guitar is good and vocals are good as long as the, uh, they're not 500 amp uh, speakers um, that go with them. Uh, doesn't really matter whether it's electric guitar or acoustic guitar. It's uh, the uh, the noise factor. Uh, so, if uh, I would strongly suggest a uh, a sound plan be submitted uh, to uh, identify decibel levels at the limit of the property line. Well, um, if I can just jump in because Mr. Valenti, you're going to a lot of different questions, so I just want to address them as you say them. Go with right regard ahead. with regard to the lighting. Uh, we can't do a point by point analysis uh, like you would typically do for sight lighting because I don't believe that the loom that that type of point by point analysis is even available for the type of lighting that we're speaking about. We're talking about low intensity residential type garden lighting as opposed to a type of lighting with a manufacturer that would provide a uh, point by point analysis. So uh, I think that we can stick with the with the commitment that it will not be any type of commercial lighting and that it will not extend uh, over the off the rooftop property. And as far as the sound, uh, we don't have a sound plan, nor are we proposing any types of loudspeakers or the like. What we can commit to is that we will comply with your with the borough sound requirements and the sound ordinance. Um, I can't submit you a plan if I don't have any proposal for speakers or amplification. Because one has not been submitted, understood. Um, with regard to uh, any uh, any intent, any possibility of consideration of uh, putting um, tensile tensile um, canopy roof uh, like the uh, the restaurants have done to no, sir. semi enclosed the area, so there would be no um, temporary. Uh, Canopies and uh, vinyl enclosures. Okay. No, sir. Just the canopy that's shown over the uh, bar area, as was indicated to at the beginning of the testimony. There'd be no covered area. It would be weather dependent. And then, uh, was there a fire official report um, with we the did, uh, with the limitation yeah. of uh, the uh, the stairs? We did the, not, Mr. Valente. But the response that I gave you from our architect came directly from your fire official, who sits on your TDRC. Uh, so that was why we looked into the uh, various capacities and code compliance. Okay. And then uh, just one other point, if I could jump in there. Um, I did sit in on the, the uh, TDRC. Uh, one of the additional comments was there is occupancy details will be submitted and approved by the fire official and uh, construction department. And, and Mr. Valente, a fire official, did sit in on the TDRC. So he did. Uh, he did discuss uh, his perspective on some of these elements and there will be uh, additional information sent to him for approval. Okay, good. And then just to uh, re to go back to the uh, the question that uh, I stated, but uh, didn't get 
I jump to other things. Uh, can you uh, please reply, uh, respond to, uh, reiterate the conclusion or how you got to the conclusion that there would be no uh, substantial yes. increased impact? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to address that because I really think you're, you're outlining a legal standard and I think the legal standard you're asking for, which is substantial detriment and the demonstration and meeting that burden really goes to when variance relief is being sought. We're not seeking variances here, but that said, uh, you did hear the testimony from our traffic engineer and, and actually it's in your own uh, board engineers review letter. While we're adding 152 seats, we're only adding uh, an additional habitable area of approximately 3000 square feet. Your very ordinance only requires an additional five parking spaces for that. And when you look at the number of parking spaces and the demand on that parking within the borough of uh, Belmar already, five is, and, and, and I hate to use a, a metaphor like this, but I really think it is, it is a good one. It is a drop in the bucket. So we are not saying you don't have a parking problem. We know in the height of summer, you have a parking problem. It's a good problem to have when you're a municipality looking to uh, invigorate your downtown and your commercial area so much so that you adopted a redevelopment plan in order to encourage it. Uh, what we are saying is that the addition of a five car demand or the demand for five more parking spots is not going to be appreciable or it's de minimis in nature to the overall demand of the borough and the downtown. That being said, we've agreed to work with your governing body to uh, come up with uh, more borough-wide solutions. And as you may be aware, the redevelopment plan gives you the opportunity to do several different things. And, and the, uh, you can achieve compliance in, I should say in several different ways. One would be to rely on existing public parking. Another would be to put the spaces on site. And a third would be to make a payment into a fund uh, pursuant to the mayor and council. And by doing one of those three or any mix of those three, we are compliant with your redevelopment regulations. So what I offered at the beginning of the meeting, knowing that this was going to be the really the only issue uh, of concern, or at least the substantial issue of concern is, is that we would agree to any condition of approval that we uh, work with the mayor and council to satisfy them that we've achieved this parking compliance. So you um, will make that a condition, correct? Yes, sir, we will. So I'd like to request that as a condition. Yes. Formally. And, and and I think that your redevelopment plan requires it. So I'm happy to agree to what I'm required to do. Yeah, no, and I'd, I'd like to get on the record of your commitment to that condition. So yes, you. we commit to that. I'm done. Mr. Valente, I don't know if your question was answered. It's certainly- Yes, um, um, well, I have a comment, but I'll wait till the comment period. Please, okay. Mr. Carvalho, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, so I sit on the CDRC, so I, I had most of my questions answered at that point. Um, but I guess the, the question that I do have, and it's not directly for the applicant, is, um, you know, Christine had said that the applicant did address the, the parking uh, regulations or requirements uh, adequately. And I guess the question that I have is, is more bigger picture to her for does she have does she have concerns with the amount of congestion this this project will bring to the area because that seems to be what uh, everybody is most concerned about I think that uh, you know as as has been said in this meeting before um, and as we discuss in the TRDC, um, there certainly needs to be a parking study done um, to see how the spaces in uh, the Belmar Plaza parking lot are being utilized, um, how many spaces we would actually require each business to have and how that compares to what's actually there. Um, but we really can't put the burden 
on this one applicant to be um, responsible for that entire, uh, for the entire situation. So I personally am concerned about uh, congestion and parking issues in the Belmar downtown as a whole. Um, and I do think it's important to, to note that if this uh, site was not in the redevelopment area, um, the parking requirement would be much greater. Um, but I don't think that, you know, it is the burden or responsibility of this applicant to alleviate uh, downtown Belmar's congestion problems. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. I was just wondering out your professional opinion outside of the uh, the parking requirements, but thank you for answering that. Uh, the only other comment I have is, um, you know, the there are on, on the liquor license, there are requirements for um, what kind of music you can have outdoors and, you know, amplified versus non amplified. So I think you have a, a, a greater um, uh, restriction on, on noise anyway. So um, that's tied to your liquor license. Understood. Yep. So thank that's you. It. Thank you, Mr. Carvelli. Mr. Bronton, this, uh, I'm going to blow it, Ted. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> um, I thought it was a very thorough application. Um, don't really have many questions about the application at all. I do want to go back to what we were talking about as far as um, being recyclable um, paper and cups up on a roof, or are we, we're, what's the actual plan? Like, what do you plan on using up there? The, the, the intention is that we're going to use non-disposable uh, glasses and and plates and silverware, and when I say non and and I say non disposable as opposed to Mr. Valente saying non recyclable, because if we use anything disposable, we intend for it to be recyclable and we'll handle it. But the intention is, like was indicated, something that is light uh, and typically plastic and paper cups and paper plates are light. They will blow away. We have no interest in having. Uh, our silverware or our utensils or our plates blow away. So the intention is to use something heavy and sturdy uh, that is not going to blow away. Can we make that a stipulation of the proposal? Condition. I, I would think that that would be acceptable. I just wouldn't want to say non-disposable because there are resin and other types of plates and cups that are substantial in weight that may not go into a dishwasher, for example, may be able to be disposed of. So we yeah. would most definitely agree that um, whatever what we- What term use, would the applicant like to agree to? What we would like to agree to is using utensils, cups, and uh, plates that are sturdy in nature and will resist uh, being blown away in winds. But are they gonna be thrown away? Or are they gonna be reused, cleaned, washed, and reserviced? we would hope that they would be cleaned and reserviced. Okay, how about we make it where they have to be cleaned and reserviced? Joel, I, I'd, I'd ask you to jump in, Joel. Yeah, I'm waiting. So <laughs> I, I, just, I just would not like that to be a condition. And, and, and I, again, I'll reiterate, I mean, if it's a concern about debris, we're gonna address that because that directly impacts the environment that we wanna have our patrons in, et cetera, et cetera. If it's a, an environmental issue with respect to recycling, you know, we take that very seriously as well. And like I said, we pay for our own recycling and our own trash removal. So we're not a burden to the town when it comes to that. So I would just like to have the flexibility at this point to say, like, uh, like Jen said, our intention is to use real silverware, real plates, real glassware. Uh, but we would like to have the option to use um, basically um, substantive uh, plastic wear that may be recyclable, but that can withstand some type of wind pressure or the environment up on the roof. So I'd like to leave it open-ended and I just, hopefully we're addressing your concerns, whether it's environmental or cleanliness. My concerns are environment. Well, I'd rather not see so much trash going in the garbage yeah. or being recycled because it's probably not gonna get recycled anyway when it has food on it and everything else too. So it's just gonna go in the garbage and get blown away, but our township is around to pick up cups and paper place off the ground anyway. So I'm not really concerned about that. It's more the environmental impact. So is there a possibility, uh, Joel, that you could commit to something that 
uh, your intent would be for it to be washable and reusable, but should it not be, uh, it'll be something of, of uh, enough weight that it would not be blown away, uh, you know, that it would not be, um, would not be, um, you know, would not be uh, potentially blown uh, across the roof, off the roof, uh, and it's, re it's some recyclable product that it could be recycled. I, I think that's what I'm saying. Uh, it, but you I don't know, know how to more eloquently say it, but yeah, it's got to be able to withstand some reasonable. Yeah, I think that's. But concerned. obviously, we, we know what can happen uh, from time to time, so it, it you know it's impossible to, to say right. it's going to withstand every gust that comes across. But that would be our intention. And I think the reality yeah. is is that Joel really wants to comply. <laughs> so the the concern is he doesn't want to do anything in violation. And when you do a a strict mandate that it must be washed and reused. It, there may be scenarios where it's just not appropriate and there may be some heavier material um, you know, that, that could be used and recycled. So we would just like to have the flexibility at our discretion. And we recognize that if we do use something that is creating excess trash or being blown around, we'd be subject to enforcement from your zoning officer, your code official. Oh, the, uh, the only concern I have is we don't want to put that burden on our you know, enforcement officials. We'd rather have some condition here that offers some clarity in both, you know, gives Joel the flexibility he's looking for, but gives the board comfort as it relates to the environmental concern and quite frankly, the, the trash and, and blow away concern. So, May I make a suggestion, Mr. Chair? Please, I'd love perhaps, to hear. Perhaps we could agree that we will not use typical picnic grade plastic wear uh, and or paper plates and paper cups that what we use will be more substantive than the those types of things it would be some sort of specialty restaurant uh, grade uh, silverware and plates and cups and that it would resist and it would resist the wind blow I look forward to the language you proposed to me for, the, for the resolution that I'm struggling to already craft <laughs> Ted, any other any other comments or questions? Rather, yeah, I guess we're just saying that no matter what, you guys are sticking with you want to use plastic on the roof, and you're going to use heavier plastic and throw out even heavier plastic than you would with light picnic wear. Just making sure we're clear on this. Yeah, I'm looking for something that notes recyclable. By the way, Ms. I, I don't want. I, I'm I'm looking for something that's not recyclable, that's reusable only, glass. Well, I, I have a question, Mr. Prodenentis. Prodenentis. Did I say that correctly? Good enough. All right. <laughs> if I may, if I may call you sir, because I'm not going to call you Ted. You can just call me Ted. That's fine. All right, fine. Ted, I, I, I think the concern is, is that it's an imposition of a requirement and an expensive requirement, maybe, on I this restaurant that. that would not be a zoning requirement or required of any other restaurant or operation in town so that's my concern so if you passed an ordinance that said every restaurant every bar must use reusable silverware and and serveware we'd say great that's what the requirement is okay. i just don't know that you can pick and choose and say oh you're the last one in so now you can't use recyclable materials i don't think that that's fair from an economic standpoint especially in this time where restaurants are struggling and doing everything they can to to succeed. In, in I, I, to my board member, we don't have any other rooftop facility like this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank but you. I don't think that this is, I don't think this, this is a, it's not a rooftop I, issue. I, I, I'm this protecting is, my board member. Jim. No, you don't have to protect him because I'm not challenging him. I'm just saying that I understand the concern and I share it with you. And I apologize that I'm drinking from my plastic bottle while I'm doing this because I, see that that might not be looked favorably by you, but <laughs> I, I, I understand your concern. I'm just asking for this, you know, the same treatment as any other rooftop or not. Um, Lots of restaurants can use plastic wear. There's no regulation about I, it. I, I think what you would find, Ms. Krimko, is that the other restaurants that have outside dining, we'll call it, it's really street level, but outside dining, they carry the same service and, and service wear that they have inside to outside. But do they and, have and I, to, or do they just choose no, to? No, it's been the norm. 
And, uh, and I think that's probably where Ted's going, which is, you know, if you go to like flames or something like that, they're outside yeah. seating area. They carry the same glassware and silverware and everything outside. So I think and he's that, asking for the same, the same, you know, the same courtesies here that you carry that same theme, especially because you're asking for, you know, a rooftop on the, you know, what is the amount of the third floor. And I'm concerned about the wind more than anything else, okay. as well as the environment. And I know, Ted, you're focused on the environment. So right. what I can say to that, Mr. Chair, is, and that was what Joel said in the beginning, that's his intention. His intention is to use all of those things. I don't know or foresee what issue may arise, but listen, my guess is, is that if this board required that, I'm sure that that's not something we would go to superior court over. So I, I understand how strongly feel about it. Um, I, I would ask you to just allow us the flexibility and our discretion as long as we predominantly use the same type of surfwear. There may be an event, there may be a wedding, there may be a kid's birthday party where we don't want to use our glasses or, you know, typical silverware. Okay, then can you make it where your normal use is going to be reusable wear and on special events, you got some flexibility. And it would continue to be something of a heavier weight, whatever that, that might be. That would be fine. Okay. Okay, Ted, any other questions or, or... no, I, I like the proposal. I'm um, look forward to it. All right, thank you. Um, I, I guess one question is probably for the architect. I'm not sure he's still with us. Yeah, he's still there. Um, with regard to the lighting, the lighting that goes along the rails, would that be shielded from kind of glowing on the outside? I'll call it. Will that be have some type of the rail have some kind of shielding so the light only goes inside that rail system. So it's going to be like LED lighting that's kind of strong underneath, I guess, the rail. Yes. So just to clarify, and I know a lot of things were said about the lighting, there are three items identified on our plan with regard to lighting at the roof level. The first is the aluminum rail around the perimeter. Yes, our idea there is LED down lighting as it's identified on the plan. This is similar to what you would find in a residential application, low voltage LED, low Kelvin temperature lighting, not throwing too far. As far as throwing light, it's offset back from the roof edge. So I think naturally it's not going to cascade light downward or onto the facade or even reach the sidewalk. Yeah. Especially given the 42 inch height. Yeah, so it's 42 yeah. inches high, it's four yeah. foot back. So I'm I'm just doing that just for the tables, just to get a little bit of ambiance at the edge. The second type of light is indicated on the screening, and that's called out as pathway down lights. These are what we see, like the little clamshell lights that just literally shine down onto the path. They will illuminate the the boardwalk area and they'll be mounted and just cascade enough light to create a lit path. Um, and then the third lighting is just shown at the bar area, which is string lights. Uh, these would probably be like an LED Edison bulb with uh, low uh, incandescent uh, temperature. Certainly the, the atmosphere of this area is not going to be the bright area. You know, we certainly the experience would be uh, terrible if it was a bright area. And you don't really need much light at night to illuminate or just create enough light that you can uh, ascertain the, the surfaces and the, uh, the areas. So, um, so all of the lights would be directed down at the rooftop and would not uh, translate outside of the perimeter of the roof. Very good, thank you. Uh, I have no other questions. So at this point, um, I would like to open it up to the public for comment. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment about this application, please raise your hand. April will call on you. Please state your name, spell it, and provide your street address. Linda Sharkis, 
S-H-A-R-K-U-S. I'm on 4th Avenue. Good evening, do need, Linda. Do I need to be sworn in for my call? Do you swear the testimony that you give before the board be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, Ms. Sharkis? I do. Thank you. Yes. Could I just ask Ms. Sharkis what her actual address is, just so I understand the proximity to the, to the subject property? All I you heard could, was 4th Avenue. Yes, you could find it online. Um, my address, I don't give it in a public forum. I ask that you let her waive the specific street address. Yes. Thank you. So I think the proposal is very interesting, but I'd like to get back to your first approval when you were going to, from a bakery into a brewery. And, and as I recall, one of the issues that you had to contend with was the number of people coming from a, uh, in individuals walking into a bakery to have in a, uh, the brewery. And people were concerned back then about how much- I, I have to put an objection on the record, Mr. Chair, for two reasons. And I, and I hate to interrupt the public because I know how important it is and how much the board considers that. But a couple of things. The first one is, I'd ask that Ms. Shark is not make representations about what other people were concerned about, that she only offer her own personal testimony. And secondly, I would ask that we limit the comments to the use of the roof this is not a hearing on the brewery, on the restaurant, or any of the other permitted uses that currently exist. The only reason we're here before the board tonight is only with regard to the use of the rooftop. So as it relates to what was and what is and the previous approval, I'm not sure that it's relevant to the rooftop. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. As I'm sure Ms. Krimko is aware, the strict rules of evidence concerning hearsay are are the to provide testimony in this instance. Okay. Ultimately, if there is an issue with regard to the residual rule, we can address that. Why don't we let her finish her question first and then go from there, but note your objection. My reason for bringing this up is the issue of parking, because as we go through, and I've sat on a number of planning board meetings, as well as the zoning board, and when you re address the parking situation, you may only be required to have put in five spaces, but 152 person restaurant certainly will lend to more congestion, probably at the expense of the other restaurants. That is my concern that it, what we might be doing with this situation is creating issues for the other businesses in town. So I've expressed concern at, at, about sharing existing parking spaces because how many times can you count the same public parking spaces? And that's still a concern. So, and their on-site parking is limited. I mean, there, there are times there's no place for the smaller restaurants to have patrons park, you know, that's, that's actually one of my concerns that I hope we as a board can work to resolve that issue. And, and Ms. Krimko made a reference to that. And I just hope we could find something that, you know, the other restaurants don't have 152 patron restaurant coming on board. You know, they might have 30 or 40 tables so, you know, that's my concern being part of a com community for many years that I, I think one of the beauties is we do have a diverse group of small restaurants that have interesting cuisine. My comment for the record, thank you. Thank you. And, and if I could just offer a, a couple comments there. Um, Doug, I would like to, uh, before we uh, close out this evening's meeting, talk about, uh, Christine had mentioned it, but I brought it up at the TDRC, uh, the intent and the request that we have a study done as to the actual uh, use of the 207 parking spaces in terms of, uh, of, terms of commitments with uh, the users in that and about that, uh, that 
public parking area, the Belmar Plaza. So I would like to see a study done that'll help us understand what the current uses are and what their demand would be from a numeric standpoint on that uh, parking area. Um, and I'll just, I'll just remind uh, Linda that uh, we do have uh, this applicant as a condition of the application uh, has agreed to participate in a uh, and to bring into this uh, their parking need into compliance by participating with the mayor and council in a uh, borough wide solution. And uh, I think she had mentioned there were a few different uh, options to go down that path, but I'm going to look for her and the applicant to uh, work directly with the mayor and council to resolve that. I thank you, Jay. But uh, the comment that 152 does patron restaurant doesn't have an impact on par parking. Although the, the development plan suggests that's okay. The logical side, I think 152 table um, people restaurant creates a real problem for, for, for our current situation. Yeah. So that's my concern is how to deal with that to alleviate the stress and burden on other restaurants. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Uh, Eugene, a common spelling, Creamer, C R E A M E R. Good evening, Mr. Creamer. You solemnly swear the testimony you give before the board be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, <laughs> before you start, could you provide your street address, please? 318 4th Avenue. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. And I used to be able to uh, sell, uh, smell cinnamon uh, when Friedman's was up there. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm that close. Uh, actually, I have a question, uh, and I, I guess uh, with additional uh, customers, that uh, it's anticipated that the uh, a brewery, uh, you know, uh, would boost uh, their production. So it is a related question. I, I guess what I would like to know, uh, does the brewery... Uh, have any independent lab testing of the water quality that uh, it buys from the borough? Joel? Uh, we purify the water that the borough provides to us or that we acquire from the, from the borough. So uh, we do our own purification. So I don't know that we do test other than just balance and purify what we receive. So I, I don't know, we have information to share with you as to the qualitative results of the water or the well water, depending on the time of year uh, that, that we're purchasing it. Uh, so I, I don't know if that provides you the answer you want to hear, but we do our own pur purification system in, in house. Okay. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that uh, you polished the water. Um, I had a couple of comments here. Um, the, the survey, uh, I guess it was provided uh, in lieu of a, a site plan, but actually the applicant is asking for approval of a site plan. Um, I note on the back of the survey, it makes uh, reference to a, uh, a metal awning. Uh, has that been removed? I'm, I'm not sure where you're referring to. So. I'm looking at the survey and I'm not sure what, and just to clarify, we are seeking site plan approval, meaning um, pursuant to the ordinance and development regulations. We didn't submit anything other than a survey because we're not making any site changes. So we gave you an as-built survey of the property and it was moved into evidence. And I just want to look at what the data is on it. The document, if I can, the document is marked as A4, 
the date of that document is 62513. Mr. Kramer, can you identify if you have that document in front of you, specifically where on that document you're referring to? It says metal planning. I believe that's on the Belmar Plaza side. Correct. Uh, that's, that's correct. Um, and I, I can I, share my screen. You're talking about right here. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We're referring to. Right. Um, so this is a dated survey. This is not really what well, exists at the site right now. Ms. Krunko, can you pull up the rear elevation? Is there an overhang over those uh, retails on the back of the building? There are individual awnings. No, I'm looking down that little roof there. Yeah, so if you can see, there's individual awnings over the... Um, over those, I don't have a ground level picture of it. Let me just see if, see how the each of the storefronts has this little blue awning over it. I believe that that's consistent with the back as well. So it is not yeah. a metal awning, it's a, it's a- Canvas. It, it has been replaced with the canvas oh. awnings, that's yeah. correct. So I thank you, Mr. Kramer. Yes, this is an older survey because no site changes were made when we first came in versus now. I imagine that the awnings were permitted under the uh, regular zoning and building permit regulations. Okay, uh, I, I just wanted to confirm I, that uh, uh, that no longer exists. Right, and we're not proposing one as well. Okay, good enough. Uh, let me see, what the I well, I, I, I wanted to uh, just ask a general question about that roof area. Uh, has there been any uh, solar survey performed? Uh, we, we have looked at, <laughs> I, I can tell you we have looked and we continue to look at some solar options. Uh, none of them have been um, pretty much acceptable at this point uh, because of the equipment area and because of the um, the shadowing of some of the existing structures up there. But we continue to look for any opportunity to provide some type of solar solution for ourselves. Okay, very good. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Anyone else in the public? That was it. All right. Seeing none. I'll open it up to board comments, starting with Mr. Lindsay. Uh, I've reviewed the plans, uh, really no comments. I think I can come to a, a reasonable uh, decision thank when you. we vote. All right, thank you. Mr. Valente. Um, okay, in terms of uh, uh, earlier comment that was made by Mr. Kovats is that uh, in this redevelopment area, we're having three and four story uh, redevelopment taking place and uh, could be in proximity. I'm concerned about the uh, open exposure uh, for uh, developments, uh, just like the, uh, the uh, apartments uh, across the street at uh, above Stago. Uh, regarding parking, um, well, the standards may call for five spaces over 3,000 feet, 3,000 square feet. I'm concerned about uh, 23 tables or something in that order and 40 bar stools. And um, characteristic uh, weekend uh, waiting periods of uh, one hour to get to the roof and where those cars are parked and uh, people are walking or uh, standing outside to get in. So it's almost like a double counting of uh, cars that would uh, be there. Um, you know, the uh, Environmental Commission recently presented its environmental resource inventory and like the uh, plastic bag, uh, no plastic bags and ordinance and things of that sort, uh, really want to see um, uh, standard reusable restaurant uh, 
utilities and um, uh, serving um, service plates, et cetera. Um, and then um, if there are going to be special events, I've uh, rarely seen weddings uh, with an acoustic guitar. Um, and uh, event um, music tends to be uh, more intrusive than uh, what would be just standard uh, uh, di dinner, cocktail hour uh, seating. Um, and uh, regarding the, uh, the shared space, uh, community uh, parking space, I'm wondering if those 50 committed, 50 plus or minus committed spaces were business related or if it involves any of the uh, residential um, development uh, commitments, possibly on 10th Avenue and or uh, the um, 9th Avenue redevelopment plan that's uh, recently been considered. Mr. Valente, uh, I like just the plan. I like the plan. I, I do like the plan. My concern is the uh, intensity. I just want to clarify one thing in case we, we caused a misunderstanding. Uh, we're not proposing weddings on the rooftop. The testimony that Mr. Brudner offered is they'd like the opportunity if they're doing a wedding on the interior space on the second floor to perhaps hold the cocktail hour on the rooftop. So it would be limited to just the acoustic music. There would not be a band of any sort because the wedding itself would be held on the uh, second floor. Okay, just to clarify. Substantial difference, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Valente. Mr. Carvelli. Yes, um, uh, I like this project. Um, I'm on TDRC as I stated before, so I had most of my questions answered. Um, I do think as a town, we do need to look at uh, the parking more seriously. Uh, obviously, uh, we can't, I don't think we should be penalizing um, one restaurant because they're the last ones. Uh, so, you know, I think, uh, but I do think that we do need to, to look at parking on a, on a grander scale, but, uh, um, I'm eager to see this, this get open for the summer and I'll be riding my bike there. So I won't okay. be taking any of those spaces. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carvelli. Mr. Meyer. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't need to beat this uh, <laughs> anymore. I think we work over pretty good. Uh, I do want to go on record to say that I, you know, my questions weren't to, to put these guys on the spot. I know they're not going to solve the parking situation. I just uh, felt it my duty to point out, as all my colleagues have, that we do have a parking situation. But uh, in the final analysis, I think it'll be a good addition to the downtown. Thank you. Ted. I think you guys put together a good proposal, answered pretty much any questions we would have. And um, I think it'd be a good addition to the township as well. Thank you. Uh, I too uh, echo the concerns uh, of parking obviously, uh, but I think it's bigger than uh, any one restaurant. It's something that we, uh, we must look at ourselves within the town and take a hard look at, uh, at uh, the growth that we've experienced uh, in downtown, especially in this area where it's becoming quite the uh, restaurant hub uh, and uh, make sure that we're able to accommodate those there today and those that come in the future. Um, I too uh, look favorably upon this application given the conditions, uh, Ms. Krimko, that your applicant uh, has agreed to uh, and uh, agree with my colleagues that uh, I believe this is going to make a nice addition to downtown and, and very much look forward to seeing it there. So that's it. Uh, Mr. Kovacs, could you summarize, please? Yes, this is a uh, application for site plan, amended site plan, amended final minor site plan. Um, there is no variance. Though the applicant didn't specifically address it, I'm, I'm going to ask Ms. Krimko to confirm there is no waiver relief requested by nodding. There's no waiver relief requested at, at this point in time. The applicant has agreed uh, to the following conditions uh, as a condition of approval that they will provide depictions of the seating, lighting, railing materials, screening materials, awning materials, identification of, of trash receptacles, and location of the same. The applicant has agreed, and I, I state the following the documentation from the engineering report on both sides, our side if you will, and the, the applicant side is that the 
net increase in parking is less than 10 spaces, um, that notwithstanding. Um, and they believe that they can provide that parking and I've given an expert opinion concerning that parking as to how that can be done through shared uh, and or agreement with the uh, borough. The applicant has agreed as a condition of approval that it will confirm with the borough a shared parking arrangement and will comply with their recommendations concerning that. Um, I'll leave the more, more difficult one to word uh, later on. They, they agree uh, as to the hours of operation that they presently have and to comply with borough ordinances concerning operation and the conditions that are placed on them by way of their liquor licenses, uh, by way of hours of operation, sound, uh, decrease in sound, comply with the ordinances and the ABC regulations concerning that. To be clear, there is no relief afforded the applicant in this application from any condition imposed upon them by the ABC or their licensing uh, authorities. Um, the applicant has agreed that there is not going to be any type of uh, fee or screening place to enclose this uh, facility to uh, allow it to be used for either a greater period of time. It's going to remain to be open. We're not gonna see any screening or those types of things. The applicant has agreed that it's going to comply with the uh, TDRC's requirement and that they will receive or it will be submitted and they will receive to the extent that they can abide by the fire officials recommendations concerning this. If they cannot, they will readdress that with the with the planning board as to. The applicant has expressed a desire. Um, to be given some flexibility as to the use of materials for serving materials. It is their intention, and I'll work with language with Ms. Krimko concerning this, it is their intention that by and large, they will use reusable materials uh, to the extent of glassware, dishes, silverware, those types of things. We want to be given the flexibility that in certain instances to provide a higher grade uh, sturdier, I hesitate to use the term plastic, but sturdier materials uh, in the event of something like special events where there are materials, and I'm assuming this is the reason why, where visual materials are being used and that the special event uh, is using more uh, of the, I guess, sturdier materials than they had anticipated. And they will use or make efforts to use uh, disposable materials and not use anything like a picnic grade or plastic. Ms. Krimko, I will work out language. We'll try to get that to you before we put it in front of forming resolution. Um, again, we've had the description as to lighting that the aluminum railing will be LED down lighting, the screening lighting halfway down for pathway, the bar to be string lighting. As I said before, they will provide depictions of that lighting to us prior to placement to make sure that that is consistent with all the parties' understandings. Um, that is your application for this instance, unless I've missed some condition, Mr. McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Kovacs. Can I have a motion to approve the application? Your motion. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Valente? Approve. Mr. Lindsay? Approve. Mr. Meyer? Yay. Mr. Protonentis? Approve. Mr. Carvelli? Approve. Mr. McDermott? Approve. Application is approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have Thank you, everyone. Evening, everybody. Appreciate it. We, we Thank wish you, guys. you well. We Thank wish you well. Thank and you. Have a good night. And we're going to figure you. out parking. <laughs> we will. We will figure we'll it out. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Appreciate all, all your efforts. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Best good of luck. luck. If I'll ask the board to stay on for a minute, if you would, please. The applicant and their witnesses are excused. Thank you. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, I'll just jump back to my comment. Let me make sure everyone's out, April. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, I would like to see something put in writing to the mayor and council, Doug, that uh, a parking study be conducted by our outside engineer. Um, with, with your permission, I'd like to work with uh, Christine. 
yes, please. Our entire engineering firm to, to fashion that, to get some idea of parameters. Yep. Uh, uh, so that we can do that. So we can do some type of, uh, and, and I think it's appropriate from what, from what you were saying, Jay. You know, we're, we're sort of borrowing on this lot. And we've been borrowing it for a while. What is the net net that we have? There? Yeah, yeah, that's the challenge. And have shared arrangements. Yeah, everyone's tapping that municipal lot and we've over tapped it. So we really got to take a hard look at what do the numbers tell us in terms of parking that we need, regardless of the 207. And then we can know whether or not we've overtaxed it by how much. And then we can start to look at, you know, beyond that report, what are the solutions? I mean, uh, I know that certainly, you know, the beach house is willing to pay for their five spots, whatever it was that uh, the developer's agreement, I think it was, you know, 3,000 or 5,000 a spot, maybe it was 15,000, I don't know. Um, but I don't know whether that necessarily solves the problem. And I think, you know, at some point, we're going to have to deal with this parking issue. And there's been talk of parking garages and additional parking space, uh, flat area, but uh, I, I know that uh, one way or the other, we're going to have to deal with it because we have a good problem and it's probably going to continue that, that, you know, this town is well, going to continue. I will to craft that. something uh, after I have an opportunity to speak with our engineering professionals and then we'll get something for you to take a look at, see if it has the right flavor. We'll get that right out. Terrific. All right. We just have to open to the public one more time for just any matter other than the application. And then if there's any other matter that the board has for the good of the order. Anyone from the public, please, once again, state your name, spell it, and street address. None. All right. Hmm. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the meeting. I'll offer it. Second. Thank you. Thank you. You got me thinking of starting a valet parking business. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big, I got a big, big lot over in Wall. I have a pretty good house. That's pretty far to go, though. So. That could anyway, be tough. We'll have to deal with it with the yep. with the density and parking. Uber and bicycles. Yeah, that, that certainly good. helps. Yep. Yeah. Um, All in favor of closing the meeting. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank Thanks you, Edward, for all your support. Thanks.